Hello, and in today's STM32 programming, we are going to be using the UART with DMA. So firstly, we want to go to the configuration. We select the DMA settings tab, then we say add. We select what we want to DMA. In this case, we're going to do both the RX and TX channels as DMA. So we add the RX, we add the TX. Now, TX channel, we can set the mode as normal. And the data width is going to be bytes. And then for the RX channel, we're going to set the mode as circular. And the data width is going to be bytes as well, since UART communication is 8 bytes wide. And that's it for the settings, I believe. Now note you're using DMA channel 5 and DMA channel 4. So for any other peripheral that uses these two DMA channels, for any other peripheral that wants to use DMA can now not use these two DMA channels. Then on the nested vector interrupt setting, we have to have the global UART interrupt enabled as well as the global interrupt for DMA channel 4 and 5. Then we can simply click just save and generate the code. Okay, so it retained our C++ project. We go to our core source and then the main.c that it has generated. Then you can see here that there is a new function here, which is mxdma in it. If we go into that by opening the declaration, you can see it sets up the DMA channels for us and enables the clock for us. So we create a new source file and that's going to be dma underscore all dot cpp i just quickly copy that finish we want to create a new header file and it's going to be the same name just the extension changes to dot h and then in the dma all we want to include the dma dot h which includes our initialization function so we create a class we say DMA and we create a public and our private and this is going to contain a static bool and we are just going to say is init and we're going to have a constructor DMA. We're not going to deinitialize this so we are not going to create a destructor for it and create a static function and it's going to be of type void and we're just going to call it init and void as our input parameters then we need to include the dma.h so hash include dma.h and now in our source file for dmail.h Yes, underscore all we need to implement here is the initial state of our static variable. So we take bool init and we give it the namespace of DMA. Great. We need to create the constructor and that's going to be that. It's going to be an empty constructor. And then we need to create our init function. We remove the static. We direct it to the DMA class. And this is going to say if is init is true, we return, we initialize this as false. We say DMA is init is equals to true. So we block the function from initializing again if it is already initialized. And then simply what we do is we go to DMA.h. We copy the MX DMA in it and we just paste it there and then our DMA will be initialized. Now we go to our main.cpp and right after, let me just double check it, after the system clock initialization. So we simply just call your DMA in it void, no parameters and we say hash include dma underscore whole dot h now our dma is initialized save build this actually i should not build it like that we can just go delete over here then we just delete our build and i forgot to initialize the configuration again configs this is from our previous ur tutorial where we enabled the custom callbacks 
Let me just double check which macro we want to set. Go, that needs to be a one. We quickly just build again. We are done building, no errors. Then we go to our uarthole.cpp that we created in the previous tutorial. And then our uarthole.cpp. Those two, after we opened our reward zero, we're going to create a new class. And this is going to be URTMA. And it's publicly going to inherit the UART interrupt. Create our labels. I believe we're only going to be using public and private for this, but you never know. Then we create our constructor, which is going to be identical to the UART interrupt one. And we create our destructor again then in our interrupt class we need to make our write virtual that we can override it in our dma class and the start read as virtual as well and then we copy these two functions over and we just label them as an override on both counts and our put function will be a virtual as well and we just copy that over to our dma class now we need to create our constructor and it takes the uart instance and the uart handle as parameters then we need to initialize our inherited class from that and that's going to be our uart interrupt class and that's going to take the instance parameter and the UART parameter. And now just to be safe, we call the DMA init function over here, which means we need to include the DMA header file that we previously created in here. Apparently it doesn't want to take it like that. Okay, UART DMA hole. Now this does not always work. It depends on your initialization order. Sometimes the DMA just fuses to work if you don't initialize it right after the system clock in it. This is just a safety measure since it's a static function and we can't double initialize it. It will just return there. Then we take the protected variable which is the static ISR list and we just add the current object to the ISR list. And next we destruct our DMA. And all we want to do here is remove the current object. And now we need to create the write function. Copy that over. Now we can have a look at the .h file. And if we open the declaration, we press Control Shift Tab. We can see it has a whole UART transmit DMA. So this is how you do a UART DMA transmission on the STM. So we just copy that function. We replace the type with return. We replace the handle with the UART base handle. So it's going to be this underscore UART hole. And the P data will stay the same as what we put in. And the size will be the same. And then before we are able to enter the UART, we can say if we go find one of the protected variables, is the TX done? TX is not done. Return hole underscore busy which is a macro defined let's actually see what it is we go to open declaration a uh, whole busy timeout error whichever takes your fancy but these are the error codes that the hole uses so we stick to that then we need to say while equals false we create i just noticed the bug in my code so we say ret is equals to hole underscore okay actually this should be declared here and we say red is equals to your whole okay size and we say if red is not equals whole okay and we say tx done is true and we return red so that's pretty much our write function done just add a space there now we need to implement the start read we need to add the uh, namespaces in front. 
Okay, now for a start read, we can go effectively to the same place and somewhere here. Okay, we see a receive to idle. We have the interrupt one, which is denoted by the IT. And then we have the receive to idle DMA version. So we're going to pull this function for our start read because we only want to receive till the DMA so the UART line is idle and then generate the interrupt based on that. We go to UART, we paste in that function and that's going to be our UART. Our P data is going to be RX buffer, so our read buffer from the protected variables. And then the size of it is going to be our RX buffer size. And then we return and then before we return we want to clear out the buffer. So we say mem set our rx buffer to the value of zero and then our size of our rx buffer. So that is our start read. And now we need to create our put function, which adds the characters to our circular buffer, which is also contained in the interrupt version of the class. Now this put function hooks into our rx event complete callback. Now, for the DMA interrupt, it works a little bit different than the ISR interrupt. In the ISR interrupt, you would start at the first index of your array, always. So on every interrupt, it will start from index zero and then fill up the buffer. But for DMA, since we've set it to circular mode, a normal interrupt, you would always start at index zero every time you would interrupt. And then you can pull the data out of the buffer. But in the case of DMA with a circular buffer, you'll have a interrupt at buffer position zero. So this will always be zero on the on the interrupt method, which is this, uh, let's say I T and this is D D M A. And then on your next interrupt, you will say be at position, say three. So you need to keep track between the two points where you are in the buffer. And if you interrupt again, it will say be at position four. And then some of your data will return back here to the start of the buffer. So you need to keep track where you are in the DMA buffer so that you don't read duplicate data. So this is now what our put function is going to implement. So firstly, we need to know what the size is of what we read, which we get from our UART handle structure, which you can see here, we check what the UART structure handle is, and then we need to do the put function for that. So we create a tracking variable in the put function, which is static uin16 underscore t, and that's going to be our last size of the data that we got and we construct that as zero then we create another static variable and we say that is the next index and we construct that as zero as well then we create a final un16 which is not static and that is going to be the size so what is the current size that we are going to be reading into our buffer and that is going to be equal to I need to make this a capital. It is going to be our size minus our last size. And then simply what we do is we say rx underscore buffer and we point to its put function and we reference our read buffer and we say that is to our next index and then we say size so this is the difference between these two sizes we would assume this is always bigger or equals to the last size so it's either going to be zero it will always be a positive integer then we say our next index is increased by the current size and then we need to roll back the buffer to the front and we say next index size plus equals size so that will be where our next index is going to be then we say if next index is greater or equals to our buffer size we say our next index is minus equals to the buffer size and we have another if the last size is greater or equals to the rx buffer size 
we simply set our last size equal to zero and we return otherwise our final will be last size is equals to size now a note if we are at the end of our read buffer we will also generate a rx event callback event on the interrupt so we can't overflow on the buffer size so this index size will never exceed the rx buffer size due to the interrupt so that's how we are hard limiting this and not accessing out of scope memory okay then we can save that and quickly build it this needs to be an underscore and we need to make that a void and i need to fix that and then we can quickly build that is read buffer read buffer put this needs to be buffer we try and build again okay we try to build again and great it's built okay simply what we can just do here now is we can comment this one out copy it with the comment and just change the class type to dma since we initialize dma up here and then we can build again just make sure everything builds nicely and then we can flash the stm32 mm. oh i forgot to output the right but that's not important we are literally just outputting our data so we switch to the camera now at the top corner you can see me type whatever i would like and then you might see some lights on the ftdi which is if i can get my finger in frame over here these two lights they are the rx they are the rx and the tx so if i switch off the light you can clearly see the rx and tx flowing data up and down now if i hold down you can see it as well that is using the dma on a stm32 a like share comment and subscribe is always appreciated thank you have a nice day